Hi everyone, I'm Austin. And I'm Dana. We are both students in the Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences Department here at Purdue University. And today, we're going to be talking about the moon and how it changes its phase over the course of a month. Hey Austin, I have a question for you. What's that? When does the moon stop eating? I don't know, when? When it's full, of course. <laughs> but how does it get there? Let's start out with orbits. The Earth, as we know, orbits the sun, and the moon orbits the Earth. Now, when we look up in the night sky, the moon appears to be glowing, right? But it can't actually make any of its own light. It's just reflecting the sun's light. So as it orbits the Earth, the way we see it lit up by the sun changes with time. As it continues in its orbit, different parts of the moon are illuminated relative to how we see it on Earth. In fact, in reality, half of the moon is always lit. We also know that the same side of the moon always faces the Earth. We call this the near side. The faces of the moon that we see from Earth depend on how much of the near side is illuminated by the sun. But what are the different phases of the moon? Well, we start our journey in darkness. The moon is between the Earth and the sun. To us here on Earth, none of the visible side is illuminated. Here is our new moon. Now as the moon starts its orbit around Earth, more of the sun's light is reflected off of the moon, showing only a sliver of the light. This is what we call the waxing crescent phase. Now it's important to note here that waxing means the light is growing. As the moon continues its orbit around Earth, the entire right half of the moon is now illuminated. This is commonly known as a half moon, or the first quarter phase. More and more of the sun's light is reflected off the moon as we get into our waxing gibbous phase. Now, only a sliver of darkness is left. So finally, the moon is on the opposite side of the Earth, opposite the sun, and is fully lit up. This is our full moon. After the moon is full, it will begin to darken. Now, the same side of the moon that originally brightened first will darken first. Thus, you will arrive at a gibbous moon where the other side is illuminated. This is called the waning gibbous. The moon will then continue to darken until you get to the third quarter phase, as it is another half moon. Now, it's called a half moon because you, you can see half of the moon illuminated, but the real term used by scientists is the quarter moon because you only see a quarter of the real illumination. Next, the moon will continue to darken until you get to the waning crescent phase. This is only a sliver shown on the left side. And finally, our journey that began in darkness ends in darkness as the moon once again returns to the new phase. All right, now let's try an activity where we could see these moon phases in action. For this activity, you will need a piece of cardboard, preferably black, a sheet of yellow paper, and some scissors, a box cutter, or something to cut cardboard with, and you should get the help of an adult to do this, a compass to draw a circle with. Don't have a compass? That's quite all right. You can try to get a piece of string and tie a pen, two pens or two pencils at the end of both the string. You anchor one side down in the center while you draw a circle with the other one. Now you're also going to need eight ping pong balls, tape or glue, and a black marker. To begin, draw a circle on the cardboard with the compass. Now the circle should be bigger than your head. Next, with the help of an adult, take the box cutter and cut out, cut out the circle from the cardboard. Next, take your yellow sheet of paper and your scissors and cut out a semicircle, which will be your sun.
Once you have your sun cut out, place it on the end of the cardboard. And either glue it or tape it. Next, take your ping pong ball and your marker and color in exactly half of the ping pong ball. This is what it should actually look like. Next, glue or tape the ping pong balls as shown here. Make sure that the white half of the ping pong balls faces the sun for each of the configurations. Now, let's see this in action. Take the cardboard and put your head through it, face the sun, and you should see the new moon phase where you can only see the black half of the ping pong ball, which represents the new moon where you cannot see any illumination on the moon. Next, rotate counterclockwise, and you should see the crescent moon, where only a sliver is illuminated. Keep rotating throughout, and you'll see the different phases of the moon, and you should see how each phase depends on how much illumination you can see from Earth. Moon phases rely on the moon's position relative to the Earth and the Sun. Starting from the new moon, getting brighter and brighter all the way to that full moon, and then getting dimmer and dimmer back to that new moon. So now, next time you're out and about at night looking up at the moon, you can identify which phase the moon is in and maybe what will come next.